Today's video brings us in for a look at version 16 in my 3D printed speaker series. Version 16 is dubbed Project Blue Halo. It has come to life in a form that truly represents the freedom of creativity with 3D printing. A quick overview of specifications shows us that this is one of the best performing speakers in my lineup so far. Producing north of 78 decibels at 1 watt over 1 meter from a small 3.75 inch cone. The construction of the speaker is unique in that the port doesn't consume internal volume and instead is an external and is used to support the 5 liter enclosure, creating a floating effect from the front. The driver is still modular, like a lot of previous versions. Looking into the fine details of the speaker, we see the port is two separate pieces, as is the enclosure. This makes for easy printing and assembly. The 3.75 inch driver is positioned in the center of the enclosure and very easily disassembles with a few metric fasteners and a threaded motor housing. The motor and cone separate from the central body into subsystems for rapid prototyping, allowing for quick component changes. Version 16 uses large ferrite ring magnets as compared to all previous versions that were using neo magnets. This reduced the overall price of the driver significantly while maintaining the same fidelity. The suspension and cone remain very similar to version 15 as I'm now narrowing the changes down to one subsystem per version. Looking to the inside, we can see the same half circle shape for the surround and the same wave inspired pattern for the spider, which is crushed between subsystems to maintain placement. The former maintains a very similar 30mm outside diameter for the coil to wind on, and the dust cap seals the inside to allow for cooling to take place. Two ferrite magnets provide the permanent magnet to the motor, with 3 8 and quarter inch laser cut plates providing the steel inside the motor. We can also see the threaded motor retainer that allows for quick motor removal, which makes changing other parts of the speaker as easy as possible. The motor in this version was designed as an underhung design again using 34 gauge wire, with a top plate of 9.3mm tall and a coil wrap of 4.8mm in height invented through the bottom plate. Looking at the enclosure and port, we see this design lends itself to additive manufacturing. The 434mm long port is printed with a support brace to help hold the large enclosure. The port is also printed in two pieces to allow for assembly into the stand. As a large flare was added at the front, the whole enclosure, port, and stand consume roughly 2 kilograms of PLA. The venting on this motor works differently than previous versions. Since a ring magnet was implemented, all venting occurs through the bottom plate. The air movement is achieved with the pressure difference created by using the spider as a piston. The air moves in and out of the five holes at the bottom plate while cooling the coil as it passes by. This relies on the tight seal in the lower chamber. When designing the speaker, I wanted something that stood out, so I designed this crazy stand mechanism that used the port to support the main enclosure. This also made achieving a 443mm long port easily possible. While designing something like this, I'm constantly trying to visualize how to build this in real life. A lot of times it involves jigs, as I'm not near as precise as my printers. As you can see, this allows for a perfectly central motor alignment of the plates and poles. Not super relevant, but I feel it's good to have a plan when designing. Honestly, this renders just in here because I want to show you how to measure piston width of a speaker. It's center of surround to center of surround. Those are all the de design changes for version 16 though. We're now going to move on to the play test accompanied with a build montage and the frequency response graphs. But first, a quick word about the video sponsor. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, a leading provider of customized PCB services. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, PCBWay offers high quality, affordable PCB manufacturing and assembly. With their quick turnaround time and excellent customer support, PCBWay ensures your projects are successful. Visit PCBWay.com to start your project today and bring your electronic innovations to life.
Okay, on this speaker version, I want to run you through my design process so you get how I start from the beginning and end where I end. And to start designing, I begin in FEM, which is finite element magnetic something, and modify the plates to give me the best saturation. I'm using a ferrite magnet this time, and I went with the rule of thumb to leave a small portion of the magnet hanging outside of the plate. This motor simulated out at approximately 0.8 tesla in the gap, producing 5.5 newtons of force on the coil. From FEM, I then build the speaker in CAD, designing around the motor, and then once I have it physically in my hands, I test the speaker in DATS to determine if it'll work or if I'm going back to the design phase to try something different. From the DAT screenshot, we can see that the peak is prominent in this driver, which means it is performing well. This also allows for the acquisition of the TS parameter numbers that I will plug into Unibox to get my box requirements. Version 16 is one of the top performers in all areas, as I'm finally getting to a point where I have a working model to make changes and refine from. So the efficiency of this speaker is sitting at around 78 decibels over 1 watt at 1 meter using an 8 ohm coil, which comes out about 6 something ohms on the R8. And it has the resonant frequency of about 55 hertz, that's the FS. The moving mass of the speaker is approximately 14 grams, and all of the Q-specs seem within reason, so I moved forward. Moving into Unibox, using the parameters I pulled from DATS, I can start playing with the desired tuning frequency and find a response curve that I like. With Unibox, I specify a volume I think will work, along with a port size I think will work, and I get a port length from my desired tuning. This determines how plausible the parameters are, whether I can fit the port in the box, or if I'm doing something crazy like an external port. I will also look at the port velocity to ensure I'm not approaching too high of an airspeed that will cause chuffing. To fix this, I would increase the port diameter, which would also increase the port length. Um, I use these numbers to design the box that was shown, um, this box is about 5 liters with a tuning frequency of 42 hertz with a 42 millimeter inside diameter on the port with a flare on the end. Once completed, I proceed to use a measurement microphone in REW to test how the driver and box work in combination. And this gives me my response curve. I can then match my response to the predicted response by Unibox to see how close it was. In this case, the speaker response was very similar all the way up to the 2000 range, at which point the real response differs from Unibox slightly. However, Unibox deals more with the low range frequencies anyways, as it's kind of made for designing subwoofer enclosures. Looking at the responses though, the red one is my near field, at approximately 2 inches or 50 millimeters from the speaker, and the green is far field, which is about 1 meter in my case, it's all the further I can get away from it. Um, the red near-filled line is almost identical to the expected graph, and the green line is influenced by my room, so I kind of expected it to be different anyways. Version 16, though, the fall-off of the graph has moved up around the 8000 Hz range, which is, which is significantly better than the previous version, showcasing again how much this is a better driver. Um, but yeah, that about does it for the analysis of Project Blue Halo. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or suggestions about this video or future videos, please leave them below. Again, thanks so much for the continued support. Half the fun with these videos is sharing them with the audience. And there's over 1,200 of you now, so a huge thanks for that. Lastly, these files, along with version 15 files, will be up on quite a few of the major 3D printing repositories for you to check out within about a week of the video releasing. So check them out if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, I think that is all that I have for today. So I will see you next time.